Another Monday, another Mailbag Monday. Let's get started, shall we? But, as is tradition, best be opening the beer first. Today it is Skull Rock Stout from Sleeping Giant Brewing Company in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, what do we got here? Five all natural ingredients, water, barley, hops, yeast, oats. Okay, so that's one more than a standard German beer, but that's fine. You can't have oatmeal stout without oats, can you? Mmm, nice color. I seem to recall having this one before. And I seem to remember enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice roastiness. Okay, first thing in is electronic parts. Does it say under here? Uh, just a part number. Okay, fine. Be like that. We'll just have to find out the old fashioned way here. More packaging. Where's the. Some IC. What are you guys? Oh, that's sort of the. Now these are L293D, which I don't remember what they are. Okay, I guess we'll have to uh, do a quick look up here and figure it out. Five pieces L293D, L293. Push pull, four channel, motor driver IC, dip 16 new from LS110 1983, free shipping, and I paid a dollar ninety six Canadian or a buck forty five American for the five of these. So motor drivers, hmm. Let's take a look, see at the data sheet. Um, so four and a half to thirty six volt supply, logic level input. Or logical level supply rather, uh, one amp per channel for the 293 or 1.2 amp for the 293D, which is the ones that I got. Nice output clamping diodes, that's a nice touch too. So here's what we've got for the four channels of it. It's showing two different possibilities of ways to use it. If you only want to go for a unidirectional motor, you can use one channel per motor. Or if you want a bidirectional motor, you can use two channels in a sort of an H-bridge kind of configuration. Okay. Okay, so pin one is enable for motor one and two. And then there's two control connections for each of motor one and two and oh, okay there's an in and out I see so pin two is the control and pin three is out to the motor okay and then just whether you send pin two or pin seven high or low uh, controls which direction this motor goes and to stop it completely even if you got pulses ha PWM pulses happening on there you can just disable it on the enable pin and the same goes on this side if you choose to run it as a, a single motor bidirectionally. All right the next thing in LED chip quantity 2, LED chip quantity 2 and LED chip quantity 2. I wonder if it's LEDs. It is a bunch of LEDs and a bunch of high power ones too. Oh, bag is labeled red, bag is labeled blue, bag is labeled 10 watt green, or 10 watt G, which I assume is 10 watt green. Let's, uh, let's play with these, shall we? Actually, no. Let's go look at the listing first, and then we'll come back and play with them. Better idea. 1 watt to 500 watts high power LED chip, 66 nanometer deep red LED grow light, 440 nanometer, 380 nanometer to 840 nanometer cob from 2012 top deal. So all these obviously came from the same seller and I just 
select the, the three different colors. So the 10 watt ones, blue is dollar thirty four each. Red is three ninety one each, and green is three ninety one each. So three ninety six. Yeah, so that's pretty close to what I paid. Um, I paid seven eighty three for the pair of greens and reds, and two sixty seven for the pair of blues. So here's the specs on them. Again, the ten watt ones are what I got, and I got red, green, and blue. Those ones there. So red is going to be between six and seven volts forward at and uh, 900 milliamps and the blue and green are each going to be somewhere between nine and 11 volts for 900 milliamps. Okay, let's go back to the workbench and put that into practice, shall we? Meanwhile, back at the workbench, I have my power supply set up for six and a half volts and current limiting at 500 milliamps. The information in the listing said the red one should be somewhere between 6 and 7 volts and 900 milliamps. So this should be nice and safe. 6.5 volts is pretty close and we'll current limit it. So let's see what happens when we turn him on. That's red. That's very bright and red. Uh, so we are at 6.5 volts. We are drawing... 2.5, uh, 250 milliamps. Let's crank that up to 7 volts. Oops, either way. So there's 7 volts near enough. And that's about 400 milliamps. And that's nice and bright. Wow, is that bright. Okay. Uh, shall we see what it takes to current limit it? So it's current limiting at about 7.3 volts, and that's half an amp. Give my eyes a bit of time to adjust. That's warm, but not crazy hot. Okay. That's kind of cool. Let's uh, see what the other two colors look like, shall we? We'll leave that uh, current limit on at half an amp for now. So this should be the green one. Yeah. That's 7.7 .7 volts, and that's only 100 milliamps. So let's crank that guy up. Okay, now it's current limiting at about 10 volts and 500 milliamps and that is super duper bright green okay and again it's starting to get warm but it's not crazy hot now blue had similar electrical characteristics to green so i'm just going to leave it at the same settings it was at and y'all ready for this oh nice deep blue and again current limiting at about 10 volts and about 500 milliamps. Can you see that? Yeah. I do actually have a piece of that same red uh, lens tape on there as I do on here. And that's still hard to see, isn't it? Unless I shade it from up there. Wow, that's bright. So should we crank the current emitting up? It said it could take 900 milliamps. 865. Voltage is still limiting there. And that is bright. Still not bright enough to shine through my dark beer, but it's bright nonetheless. And, ah, that one was on for a little bit longer, and I was hitting it a little harder. And, yeah, that got warm. So I'm obviously going to need some kind of heat sinking for these things but I have some of that around here somewhere. And I'm also going to need some kind of a driver for these, probably some kind of a constant current driver just to, uh, just to make them easier to deal with. But I think I'm going to want a constant current driver that I can PWM. Because what's the point of having really bright RGB LEDs if you can't PWM them and dim them and 
uh, change the relative brightness between the three of them to get any color of the rainbow. Theoretically, anyway. I don't know if they're going to mix that well. Okay, next thing in is chips. Okay. Haha, <laughs> more LED cobs. These ones look like they've got some kind of uh, old protective film on the front here. Yes, they do. So these guys are also a 3x3 three three grid of chips in there. And, and since it says two times, I'm going to assume that they are both the same. That would just make sense, wouldn't it? But of course, what are they? Well, I've still got my test rig set up here from the last time. So let's just... Uh... Okay, so positive is marked on that side and negative is marked on this side. I've turned the current limiting down to about uh, 250 milliamps. So... Oh! I didn't notice that the first time I looked at it. So on the positive side, there's three... Uh, Con conductors, I guess, coming out all going to this common thing like the other ones were. But on this side, there's three separate ones. So, is this in fact an RGB? Let's find out. Contact. Red. Green. Blue. It is. What are we drawing? Okay, so that is current limiting. Okay. Can I connect to all three? Hmm. No, I, I can't really make contact with... Oh, there we go. Well, sort of. Anyway, that's pretty neat. So, there's only a series string of three LEDs of each color in there. So, these aren't going to be the same 10 watts as those other ones, probably. Um, be a third of that, right? Three watts, maybe? Ish? Let's find out. 10 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt, 50 watt, 100 watt LED chip, super bright, high power SMD bulb for floodlights. From Luna City 88. Free shipping, of course. $2.05 each piece, and I bought two of them for $4.10. So the price doesn't look like it's changed. But yes, I got the RGB one, that one right there, in 10 watt, I guess, because that's the smallest one that they show I guess yeah they would call it a a 10 watt because each of the colors the red the green and the blue would be a third of that so okay fair enough but nowhere down there do they call out the actual RGB one Well, that's been fun so far. Well, let's see what we got here. Modules times three. Reasonable enough, I guess. Vague, but not entirely dishonest. Is that everything in there? Yes, it is. What do we got here? Yep, three different modules. This big guy looks familiar. It looks like an Arduino Uno. Because it is. Our, that's interesting that the bag's open. And it was double bagged here. Comes with an extra set of pins. That's good. Oh, this one's got a micro USB on it. That's different. Most of mine either have the full size USB, um, that one. Or the mini, which do I have one of those handy here? That one, but this one's a micro. I have to dive into my stash, or of course, I've got a bunch of them. Let's just plug that into my USB power bar and see if there's a blink sketch in this thing. There is, there is a blink sketch in it. 
Uno R3 18mega328P-16UCH340G micro USB compatible for Arduino from GoWin Electronic. So this isn't the listing that I bought it from. That listing's long gone. This is the closest that I could come from the same seller. Uh, this particular listing is two pieces. The one that I bought was a single one and it cost me $4.39 Canadian, um, which is a little bit cheaper than this. I of course got free shipping because I always do, or almost always do. Uh, Alright, so also in that package from the same seller, there are two other little boards here and they're not the same. I was originally going to open them. Oh yeah, what the hell, I'll open them together because they look very similar. Oh, they're not exactly the same either. What they are is Arduino Pro Minis. Um, the Pro Mini, again, uses the same chip, although I noticed this one's got a 16 meg crystal and this one's got an eight meg crystal, but they're still running on that 18 mega 328, probably. Um, the main difference between these ones and a Nano, do I have a Nano handy? There's a Nano, is that the Nano has the USB chip built in. These guys don't, so you have to come up with your own USB to serial. The upside of that is they're cheaper. And once you've got your program written and you're not experimenting anymore, might as well throw it into one of these and solder it in permanently, right? Why not use the cheapest thing you've got to embed? So let's take a closer look at these chips and see what they are. So the one with the 8 meg crystal is using an 18 mega 168 P, which is an older chip than the 328. It's, as far as I know, instruction compatible but it runs at a lower speed and it's got a little bit less memory inside it, I believe. But they're also cheaper typically. The one with the 16 meg crystal is also an 18 mega 168. Okay. So it's just got its fuses burned inside it for a different speed. So other than that, oh, okay there. I mean, this one's got a little bit beefier, uh, a uh, voltage regulator than the black one. Other than that, there's very, very little difference between the two of them. And I made some more mistakes while I was describing these as similar. The, uh, so Pro Mini 18 Mega 168, 3.3 volts, 8 meg Arduino compatible Nano uh, replace 18 Mega 328. So this one, the blue one, the 8 megahertz one, is actually a 3.3 volt version. Okay, have to remember that so I don't make it go up in smoke. Uh, when I bought it, it cost me $2.02, currently going for $2.40. And the other one, Pro Mini 80 Mega 168 module, five volts 16 megahertz for arduino compatible nano replace 328a so all these came from GoWin electronics this one cost me actually a dollar 69 when i bought it it's two dollars and 32 cents right now so that's that's the difference between them uh the three volt one runs slower the five volt one is five volt tolerant and it runs a little bit faster and the fifth and final thing for today, plastic patch and expansion board module. Plastic patch. Hmm. Is that anything different than plastic sheet? I wonder. So there is, in fact, two things in there. This one is a bunch of chips. Hey, who are you guys? Does it say not really? These are L9110H, and I think the other ones are, yeah, same thing, only upside down. Okay, let's uh, go see if we can figure out what those guys are.
10 pieces L9110H LG hmm, Dip 8 Full Bridge H Dridge Driver Motor Driver IC. I wonder if that's anything I can H bridge. Uh, from Ellis, 110 $4.94 for the 10 of them with free economy international shipping. L9110 motor driver chip in dip 8. Wide supply voltage range from 2.5 to 12 volts. 800 milliamp continuous output per channel. Uh, in A and B, out A and B. A couple of ECCs and a couple of grounds. Okay. So you can use it in this mode. That's nice. So you don't have to... Uh, you can just send it either a forward or a reverse and make the motor go. That's nice. So you should also be able to PWM these guys. Also in the same package. Well taped up. Why did that just happen? Ah. Get out. Here we go. And one's on the floor. Got it. Okay, there are five of these guys. Let me just repair this. In all my excitement, I forgot to tighten up my blade between seams here. So this looks like... Uh, what do we got here? Zoom in. Motor A, motor B. Oh, hello. L9110. Didn't we just look at? Yes, we did. This is the S version. The surface mount version. Duh. And... So this is obviously a dual channel motor driver board. What do those say? 1A, 1B, ground, VCC, 1A, 1B. Well, there we go. Actually, those look even more familiar. Hang on for a second. I think I've got some here somewhere else. Yes, I thought I did. There's pretty much the same board right there that I was using with this guy. Okay, so now I have no shortage of that kind of motor driver. And these prove to be very easy to drive. Again, you just give them a, a direction and a PWM signal and off you go. Five pieces, L9110H bridge stepper motor dual DC motor driver controller board. Again, from Alice, then, uh, 1983, $4.24 with free shipping for the five of them. That's a bargain. And there's no real surprises here. 800 milliamps, 5 to 12 volts, TTL CMOS compatible input, output clamping diodes, all the rest of it. Oh, hey! Some test code. That could come in handy later. It's probably less ugly than the code that I came up with, too. Gonna have to snag that. Okay, here is the array of Mailbag Monday items for today. Now let's go through the, uh, the shipping times. The package of Arduinos, the or Arduino compatibles, the Uno and the two Pro Minis, took five weeks to get here the dual channel the four channel motor drivers uh these ones here took 28 days these two rgb 10 watt leds took 42 days the 9110 ic's and the motor drivers came together in a package they took five weeks and these three uh Pairs of uh, red, green, and blue LEDs took, you know, where's my note, 42 days to get here. Oh, no, nothing too obnoxious. These ones all were ordered 
and arrive before the mail strike. So that's not you know, five ish weeks on average. So thanks for watching. Um, I always appreciate it when, uh, when I see people who are watching and enjoying my videos, I love to hear from you guys in the comment section, what you have to say. And as always a special thanks to my, uh, my handful of Patreon supporters who kick a buck or so into the tip jar now and again to help me pay for this stuff and keep the mailbags rolling. I really appreciate their help. There's a link up in the description. Thanks for watching everybody. I will talk to you later.